All right. So now I am processing this idea. An idea. And it comes from, I don't know. I need to do something right now. So when I'm out here and I have like got all these weeks off and we're going to be like reorganizing our kitchen and our closet and our closet, our garage and all of those uh, pieces of our world, just trying to get that back to normal. And then they're coming on Tuesday to hopefully fix the heater for the school, which has been offline for two months. It's like our world has been super, super Not chaotic. Like, God, what a first world problem, huh? Oh, I have to wash my dishes in the bathtub. Oh, woe is me. As people are, like, carrying bottles of water or barrels of water on their head. Two miles. Anyway, um, perspective, right? Just a matter of perspective. And uh, so I'm sitting here thinking, I want to do something. I want to create something. And part of me is thinks about it musically. And part of me is thinking about it like um, even for Jasper for Christmas right now, I am like, I need to go to Walgreens even after I get done with this task and pick up a hundred, like almost like 180 pictures for Jasper that I'm going to put together in some sort of, originally I was going to do one of those cool books, you know, that you put like words about what was the event, but I'm like, no, he's just going to get random shit. Like, but this is also how I kind of function. Like that was when we were looking at, we were at a Home Depot or something, uh, Michael and I, and I was like, why don't we get PV, we were talking about PVC pipes for him. Just uh, like with joints, with L L joints and T joints and um, all of these different options. And then we cut them into different smaller sizes, basically making our own tinker toys. But there's, I love that growing up. I love, love, love just having raw materials and then building it. So in my mind, it was like, oh, that's kind of what I like about um I may have lost my train of thought now that I'm driving. But it's like I need to create something. I don't want to just buy something. And and also Christmas is right now. And so it's like literally I have not done any Christmas shopping. Any. Um, Except for when I stopped by Walmart to get like some bags or some pretzels or candies. Uh, not pretzels, peppermints or candy canes to get the kids when we would have like some sort of fun contest that's just going to try to keep it motivated. We're watching a movie and we're going to, I guess nothing much, but it's something. And some people, some kids look at it as like super like, why the hell would I want this little tiny candy cane? And other kids, I can't tell you how many come up later and say things like, thank you. So it's sweet because that's what you're connecting with them on that level of, like you're a, gr- a grandpa who's may or may not be in touch with where everything's at, but his heart's in the right place. So I'm, I want that kind of perspective on this idea. Of, I have all of these gifts that I need to buy or make And then I keep thinking maybe making isn't about typing or sewing or uh, woodworking, which I do. I'm so excited to have a garage because that will be the, um, that will be like a, a game changer as far as having access to, I don't know. It's not going to be immediate, but it's just going to, you'll see. It's just, I love, like right now I'm going to, like, start the fence for Lausanne. It's going to take a few days, but it's, like, so excited because I get to create something, build something. Anyway, all that to say, uh, I'm trying to balance all these needs, trying to balance this need to create, and um, that's when I it starts, th- I keep thinking about... Oh, crap.
Um, this need to create something that will mean something to the kids, maybe. So that's kind of the spirit where this is coming from. And I keep, and I thought back to the initial book that I was writing, not book, it was screenplay, when, um, right after I separated from Laverne and the girls, and I was spending that summer in my, the apartment, like, totally, you know, apart in the sense of feeling that gap. And being who I am, I'm like, God, right, I got to do something with my time. Let me... uh I'm going to go and take, I found this uh, class at USF, and it was a class on um, screenwriting and screenplay writing, and so, and so I decided to take it, and it wasn't for credit or anything, it was, you know, a fee-based kind of um, course, and so it was uh, interesting, because you had to pick a topic and then they walk you through it. And we watched movies like Sixth Sense and watched how people would uh, manipulate your senses or, you know, like screenwriting is pretty vast. And so it was like fun to just explore this idea, probably like a novel, somebody who is in the arts would pick up, read it and go, that was great. I had to go through a class in order to learn it. And I probably didn't even learn it very deep. But the story that I was writing, we had to get to 10 pages, and I have since lost those uh, that manuscript. So <coughs> if anyone is, like, tempted to pull those out for posterity's sake, they're gone. Digitally as well, to my knowledge. But anyway, um, when we uh, were in the class, we had to come up with this, like, dilemma, and then you work towards... And basically, a page on a screen, like when you get a manuscript, one page is about one minute, they say, of screen time. So like a movie that's an hour and a half, they say, is like anywhere from 90 to 100 pages. So having a real thick one, if it, it depends on if there's just way too much detail or something, wouldn't necessarily be a good thing because you can't, like to do a play with that or a movie with that like you're gonna have to severely condense it like harry potter like look at those how they try to convert those or twilight or what have you but anyway um when they um was taking this course so the play was about this man who was cleaning his gun in the garage he's gonna go hunting Oops. Uh, he's going to go hunting, and you can tell he's a hunter just by the panning around the garage area or the shed, whatever it would be. Just an interior of somebody who uses that as a workshop and a, uh, a place, a garage kind of feel. So <clears throat> he goes into uh, you, great detail. The camera like pans around, and you see the detail of how... Even slightly changing a position of a tool or a rag or something like dropping it wasn't enough, but there was some purposeness to it. But as you scan around and you see all these pieces, suddenly you come to realize like he's trying to set the stage to make it look like there was an accident. And right when you start to realize that as the viewer, the man starts to visibly pull the gun towards the position where he's going to kill himself. And right at that moment, the door opens in the room and in walks with yelling the man's name in a friendly, like, I'm here. Meanwhile, to his horrified eyes, he sees the man, the man sees him, they lock eyes, and the man fall, lets go of the gun and bends over like he just cannot believe, he's so fatigued. Every ounce of his energy took him to get here. And now his friend came in and stopped the act. 
So then comes the overwhelming emotion of a friend who cares for him and a friend who is shocked to see that this was even like a, where did this come from and at that time the man uh, he starts heaving and he's crying and saying they can't know they can't know and his friend, in a super sympathetic, loving way, is like, of course, no, no. It's, he's trying to assuage him and keep him from going down this path that he obviously seemed to be on. But now it seems like he's on the other side of the ledge or back away from the ledge. And he and the man, like, have this loving and yet, like, caring and raw conversation where he says they just can't know. And the man is like, okay, and he, and he looks, and he looks like he's begging his friend. They cannot know, they cannot know, they cannot know. And he is like going, okay, 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 I won't say a word, you know, knowing like he, I'm not, okay, obviously this would crush them. And he's like, no, you don't understand. And he goes, no, I, I promise I won't say a thing. And he goes, you promise? And he goes, yes. And at that point he goes, thank you. And he picks his gun up and pulls the trigger goes to black. Next scene opens and it's in a, obviously in a house, a very open floor plan. There's a kitchen area, but a pass through like a um, bar through the dining area there, and flows into the living room. And there are pictures on the wall and on the table. There are all these photos of various sizes and photo albums. And on the TV in the background are pictures that are flipping through on a slideshow. And there are lots of people in the house. And they're all dressed in very dark colors and very somber environment. As you look and realize the pictures are of the man in the barn. And they're at his wake. And his kids are there and there and everyone's consoling them and holding them and helping him to, uh, helping them to know what a great dad they had. And as you pan around and people would pick up pictures and they'd laugh because there'd be all these crazy family pictures or church pictures at men's retreat or there was all when he was in, um, in his organization, like all his colleagues and their teams that they were a part of are all in these and these people, many of those people are in the house. And they're talking to each other about these funny memories because this man was such a loved, loved and liked person. And they would pick up a picture and they'd tell a story about it. And they'd say, remember when? And the story they would tell would have details of uh, an event where something seemed to always go awry. And... That man was, uh, he ended up everything, losing keys to uh, getting um, stuck in an elevator, like these crazy stories. And all of these um, other, you know, beautiful, beautiful uh, memories. And that was like just this incredible, incredible, positive, happy place where people remember this incredible life. And the scene. Fade into now we are sitting in the barn. 
And the man says one last time, the one where he lets his guard, like he finally believes him and says, they can never know. And the man says, like he did, I will not tell them, I promise. And the man's face softens. But instead of him snatching his gun and pulling the, the, the uh, whatever, the, what's it? not the snout, what do I want to call it, the snout? A gun's uh, barrel. Oh my God, why did that word go? So the barrel, and he is, instead of pulling that up, he sets his, he lowers his shoulders. And he says, thank you. And he starts telling his story. And he had hoped that his family would never know that he almost left them. If it wasn't for whatever you want to call it, the universe, energy, God, helping to put a shift in what do you do when you get to that point. And so, fast forward small pictures of him carrying his stuff out of the house where there's the tearful goodbyes, the happy moments at times of sitting near each other still as the children are growing and all of the things that happen. And his story as he dealt with his lies and struggles and accepted them and refused to refused to give hope where there wasn't hope that was going to produce a lot of pain a lot because you suddenly become human in a way that was very, very painful to others. And that's not always a survivable thing in relationships. But flashback to the scene where now it shows, he tells his wife and she throws the things. So it's a repeat of that same thing. And now we take over And we follow her storyline of where she pulls out the family albums sometime after the separation. And she starts looking at those same pictures that were on the mantle during the memorial. And the stories that you heard about their happiness and she rips the picture in half. As she mumbles, it was all lies. And then comes the title of the screenplay over the, um, as the picture fades out with just the simple word perspective. So, some of you might think some of these things I'm going to do are weird, but it's just a matter of perspective. They're going to be awesome. I can't wait to explore the concept of how we ground through perspective. Changing it. Adding to it taking away from it, like re- rethinking it. Think about how many things that we were taught that we had to unlearn and how many things that we still are practicing or thinking and 
they're going to be there. They're and they're they're they're, they're most of the time they're um, amoral, meaning they don't have any morality themselves. They're just facts that are there, but it's what we do with them, or what we feel like we have to do with them, or what we, or even just feel like the expectations they bring our world, ha- our, our personal world, definitely, definitely, definitely changes as we change our perspective. Anyway, hopefully this could be fun. Rather than doing my Jasper series, I'm going to do a perspective series that includes you all. Maybe I'll type it up. Oh, God, I never finished anything I plan to do. All right, we'll see. Love you.